All right, Algebra 1, we are just going to continue here with factoring trinomials. Hope you guys all had a great week last week. You know, apologies that this is how it ended because I think this is the last video uh, I'm going to be required to film for you guys. You know, certainly was an ideal situation, but you guys are all really, really hardworking and uh, intelligent. Next year, you'll pick this stuff up uh, with your uh, new math teacher, no problems. I'm not worried about any one of you. So, um, onward and upward we go. So, I introduced this uh, factoring trinomials to you uh, very, very briefly in last week's video. I figured this week I'm just going to take you through a bunch of examples. I think the more you see it and hear me talk about it, uh, you know, like I would in class, that's probably about as good as it's going to get. There's lots of things we would have done in class, uh, particularly with the more difficult versions of these. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. Um, I'm not going to be putting, you know, hours and hours of videos uh, up online for you guys to watch uh, because, uh, quite frankly, I'm not that good at them and uh, they would be uh, very, very boring and uh, also a little bit of a waste of your time. If you recall in last week's video, when you are factoring a trinomial, you are unfoiling. You're trying to break it apart into its two binomials that will multiply together, that will foil together to give you what we're looking at right here. So we're going to take a look at number two here. What we need, first and foremost, is you look for a GCF and there is not one. First, you start with your coefficients. Well, one, 11, and 10, the greatest common factor is one. We never care about factors of one. Then you look at your variables for each term, n squared n, but then no n's, so they don't even have any n's in common. There is no GCF here. As a matter of fact, as I look over this whole first page, none of these have a greatest common factor. It's not until the next page that we'll see one. There's no GCF. So now we get right into factoring the trinomial, which is breaking it apart into its two binomials. We are looking to put two numbers here and here at the end of each parentheses, all right, the lasts, all right, the L part. We're looking to put two numbers there that add to negative 11 and multiply to 10. You usually start here with factors of this number, multiply to this number, all right? Well, the factors of 10 are five and two and one and 10. If I was using five and two, is there any way I could take a five and a two and make an 11? I don't think so, all right? A five and a two, when we combine them, regardless of signs, will either give me a three or a seven, positive or negative, doesn't matter, but none of those is 11. Now, obviously a 10 and a one can get us an 11. So we're gonna put a 10 and a one. Now here's the thing, it doesn't matter where you put these. I did the one here and the 10 there, you could have it the other way. Because remember, when you're multiplying, and we're multiplying these two binomials, you can multiply in any order you want. So you don't need to worry about where you put those. I need this 10 and one to give me a negative 11. Well, if these have different signs, right? If this is positive 10 minus one, that's nine. If this is negative 10 plus one, that's negative nine. So that's not gonna work. We need them to have the same sign to get a negative 11. Well, if they're both positive, I'd get a positive 11, which is why we know we need them to be negative, all right? So this is how you do this, all right? You're looking for factors of 10 that will add to negative 11. So you start with your factors of 10 and you ask yourself, which ones can give me 11? Then once you have that established, you then work on getting the correct sign of the 11 that you need, which is why these are both negative. We put N here and we put N here and we are done, okay? We have factored this trinomial. N times N is N squared, right? Firsts, N times N, N squared. Outers, negative 10 N. Inners, negative N. Those will combine to give me negative 11 N. And then when you do your lasts, negative one, negative 10, you will get positive 10. So now we've checked it, we know it's correct. Let's take a look here at number four. There is no GCF, I, we already went through that. Open up your parentheses. You can even put the N in the N first if you want to. Factors of 12 that add to four. Multiply to 12, add to four. Factors of 12, three and four. Well, I don't think factors three and four would get us to a four. Three plus four is seven, three, you know, four minus three is one. So we're either gonna get a seven or a one, positive or negative, that's not it. Six and two will get the job done. Six minus two gives you four, doesn't it? You put your six, you put your two, and you just heard me say six minus two. If this is a positive six 
And if that's a negative two, do I get my positive four when I combine them? Plus six minus two is four. Do I get my negative 12 when I multiply them? Positive six, negative two gives you negative 12 when you multiply. There is your factored trinomial. Rolling right along. Maybe we'll do two more on this page. B and B. Add to 16, multiply to 64. Hopefully you're saying to yourself, that's really, really easy because positive eight and positive eight will multiply to positive 64 and will add to positive 16. And again, check these by foiling. Firsts, B squared, got it. Outers, plus 8B. Inners, plus 8B. That's a plus 16B. Lasts, plus 64 when I multiply. We've got it. Let's just go right here to uh, number 12. Why not? Here we go. I noticed in last week's video, I needed to clip my nails really bad. So I made sure I got that done, if anybody cares. N and N, add to negative five, multiply to six. That sounds like it's gonna be three and two. Now you might say to yourself, yeah, but six and one can also give me a five and you'd be right. Six and one can give you a five, but they have to be the same sign if they are gonna be giving us a positive six, which means it's either gonna have to be a plus six plus one, which will give me seven, or it's gotta be a minus six minus one, which would give me negative seven. So it's not six and one, it's gonna be three and two. Now, they're either gonna be both positive or both negative. Plus three plus two is plus five, that's not it. Minus three minus two will give me the negative five I need when I add them and the positive six I need when I multiply. So unfortunately, this is a, a bit of a mental process. Again, like I said, if we were in class, I would have shown you something called the diamond problem, which is very handy when we get to more difficult versions of these, which we're not gonna get to. Let's take a look on this second page here where we will have some that have a GCF. Take a look at number 16 here. 5n squared plus 10n plus 20. Anyone notice the greatest common factor there? Wait for it. <laughs> so, 5, 10, 20. They have a greatest common factor of five. So this problem starts with you pulling out a five and now dividing that out of each of these three terms of the trinomial. Five divided by five gives me one N squared. 10 divided by five gives me plus two N. 20 divided by five gives me plus four. So this problem had a greatest common factor. Now we factor the trinomial, which doesn't factor. It doesn't factor. I'm actually just gonna check the answer here, number 16, just to make sure, and wouldn't you know it, look at that, five N squared plus two N plus four, it doesn't factor. Now, how do I know that? Because I was asking myself in my head there, what two numbers add to two and multiply to four? Well, the only factors of four are two and two, which will either give you a zero or a four, and four and one, which will either give you a one or a five, I'm sorry, a three or a five. None of those is a two, and that's how I knew this guy was gonna be done. So all number 16 had was a GCF. There was nothing else that needed to get done. Let's take a look at number 20 here. Number 20's got the same GCF. Oh, right, sorry, I didn't make these problems. This came from the internet. Five, 30, 40. Once again, we have a greatest common factor of five. We start dividing. Five B squared divided by five gives me one B squared. Negative 30 B divided by five gives me negative six V. 40 divided by five gives me plus eight. I can factor this guy. Add to negative six, multiply to eight. Well, is it gonna be eight and one? Nope, not gonna be eight and one. It's gonna be four and two. So V and V, we are on a negative six and a positive eight. Multiply negative four, negative two, positive eight. Combine negative four, negative two, and you get your negative six. And this is your final answer. Don't forget the five out front. That's a very common mistake when we get to ones that have greatest common factors, is that students will factor it out, then they'll factor their trinomial, but they'll forget to rewrite that GCF they took out. That is one of the factors here. We have a factor of five, we have a factor of V minus four, and we have a factor of V minus two. Do a few more with you. Four, four, and eight. I can pull out a GCF of four. V squared minus V minus two. Don't forget the four. Add to negative one, multiply to negative two. Well, that's gonna be easy. That's negative two plus one. And that will do it. You will get super fast at these the more you do them. Initially, you may be saying to yourselves, I don't get it, this is hard. But if you just keep going through the process, 
writing your A and your M, asking yourself the questions you need to ask yourself to get this done, eventually you'll get the knack for it. Last one. Uh, this is quite possibly the very last problem we will ever do together. Oh, sad face. We got V squared when we divide by six. We got plus 11V when we divide by six, and we get plus 10 when we divide by six. Don't forget your six. Two parentheses, this is an easy one. Add to 11, multiply to 10 when everything is positive. That's gonna be 10 and one. V plus 10 and V plus one. And there you have it. Remember, one final thing. It doesn't matter where you have those two factors. You're multiplying. The order of the factors is not important. That's called the commutative property, I think. Um, so, you know, if you had V plus one, V plus 10, that's the same answer. And the reason why I mentioned that is because you're gonna get this answer sheet. And when you check your answers, if you have K minus eight, K minus five, you have the same answer as them, even though they wrote it minus five, minus eight, all right? It doesn't matter in what order you write the factors. That's all she wrote. If this is our last time together, maybe I'll turn the camera around here and say goodbye. Oh, hold on, I gotta unscrew it. There we go. So, um, I've been filming these videos here in uh, my gym because it's quiet. And uh, yeah, uh, have a great summer. Everything will be all right. I think, uh, you know, I think things will uh, go back to normal pretty soon. You know, what do I know, though? I'm just guessing. But, um, yeah, miss you guys. This was uh, a real crappy way for it to end, but we'll see you around. Eyes on the road, don't lose control. I'm speeding fast to chase my soul. I'm driving to get away. High and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting Another day Neon lights in the fast lane light Riding high Reaching for the sky